We're about to have some results for the 4x4 trial. If you'll recall, I'm running a trial of two uh, formulations of thymol oil, thymovar and apovar, apolife no, VAR. And then uh, parallel to that, I have apovar, a uh, synthetic miticide, and then a control. And then I've also gonna, at the same time, uh, we're out today, and we sampled uh, the one yard that uh, had been uh, higher mites and was treated, has had two rounds now of Apolife VAR, and we have that. It's always good to keep in mind what is it you're expecting, what is it we're testing. We know that uh, mite levels typically spike up in hives in um, Canada in the fall as the bees go into a period of austerity, um, vastly minimize their brood rearing, and so there's no place for the mites to hide. So we're expecting, when we look at a control hive with no treatment, for mites to increase if there's mites present at all. One of the flaws of my experimental design is I didn't have enough mites in those hives to begin with. I'm still okay with that. Having no mites is, uh, is okay. But what I do want to see is, uh, that ex can I keep that expected rise flat? So that's kind of the treatment goal. That's, that's really the goal of the treatment. If I was uh, expecting high mite levels, uh, or if I'd been finding high mite levels in these hives, you know, three, three, four percent, five or six percent uh, around that Labor Day weekend, beginning of September, you know, that's, you're already in the danger zone and you need to hit them with everything you got and more. Whereas I'm kind of in this, what I hope is a control or, or a, uh, you know, a management uh, might situation where I just need to kind of keep, just knock them down a peg or two. So with that being said, let's shake some mites. So here is our control. Uh, oops have these jars uh, feel for how many bees are in the jars by having one time counted them. So every one of those graduations is 100 bees. So here we have, now they're floating a little bit, so it's not right to the top, but I'll bet you that's 400, maybe 450 bees. Pour it into my shaker. These uh, samples have been sitting around. You know, I posted the video of me taking these samples a while ago. And uh, honestly, I've just been in over my head with uh, lots of stuff going on. And the number of mites in the jar doesn't change just because you don't shake them for a while. So I've been sitting on these for a bit. Not much there. Hmm. Okay, and that's our control. So We're going to shake that out over a uh, cloth just to be sure. So that's uh, just a fi old filter cloth, a ch cheese cloth, uh, after I'm done using the, the, those to filter honey, then I, I use them to sample mites.
Okay, well, I did find one. Let's have a look at that. So... There it is. So, control. We're not, we're not going to get anything statistically significant here, but uh, this is, could still be interesting. So the control in one might. Okay. Okay, this is the uh, hives from with the apivar treatment. Well, I should have marked that as 400 bees. So that's a quarter of a percent. And one mite. Okay, now that's apivar. I don't shake these as long as if it was a fresh sample. Right, these things banged around in the truck for a couple of days uh, and then it was sitting in alcohol for five or six days. But you can see there, not much going on. We can double check that. Got a couple stingers, but no mites. All right, then We'll do the April Life VAR. These will probably be the same, and we're probably wasting our time here, but um, it's good to it's good to get familiar with the product before you go all in and use it on every hive. Um, I do have a bit of concern about my hives feeding. They've been taking the syrup awful slow. Um, and I'd be tempted to do something drastic, except that I'm running this trial. So I was at that site today as well, uh, just checking how the pails are doing. And there's no difference between the, uh, the hives that have the treatment and those that don't. So whatever reluctance these hives have to take the syrup this year is environmental, not it's not the products in the hive. Um, it has been pretty cool. And also, I got the feed on pretty late because of our very late season, so um, that's probably what I'm looking at. So I'm probably, you know, figuring on feeding indoors again. I, I end up talking myself into doing that every year, but every year about this time, I'm hoping I wouldn't have to. But, um you know, it's, it's some comfort to know that I can, if the hives start getting light, uh, start putting some, some bottle feeders on them. But I wouldn't start that until January, February. All right, nothing. And then our last sample 
the thymovar. Those are the yellow wafers. These samples are all about the same size, so uh, we don't have to sweat the counting of the bees too much. I took them, took them all the same way, uh, sampled right off the brood frames. I thought I had a mite there, but it, oh, maybe. Um, it must have been a young one, because it's kind of not the right. I drew that. That's one for sure. So, that's interesting, okay. Um, so we'll call that Two five. Now, I'm not gonna. It's interesting. Suggest further study. Uh, I wouldn't want to slag a, a product just on, you know, one mite versus none in a 400 B sample. See, you know, that's not statistically significant. Um, now let's see. We. But we're not seeing uh, that hockey stick rise in any of these hives. That speaks well to the condition of the hives, the condition of the trial. Now let's see how we know we have mites in this bee yard. So this is may, probably going to be more interesting. So what we have here are as high sample today, or B sampled today. Nice heavy sample, it's probably 500 Bs there. From a yard that had uh, right around 1%, I think it was, maybe it was a bit over 1.5%. Uh, in that first series of sampling. So we would expect now, you know, all things being equal to have this sample show 3%, 4%, right? Doubling, doubling over the month. I'm shaking a little longer because it's a, it's a much fresher sample. Those mites hang on a little bit. So if that, now these hives, I'd have already put um, one treatment of Thymo uh, or the April Life VAR, April Life VAR, I don't know, uh, I don't know what the, the producer thinks we should pronounce it or, but the thyme, thyme oil in the uh, what we were calling cookies, the little kind of wafer biscuit in those yellow packets. Um, I did, uh, when I realized those 
that, uh, well, I tried that site, and then when I realized it uh, with those as well, and then when I realized I had higher mites there, then I did a full, uh, so today we were in there doing the third round. Nothing. Clean, clean as a whistle. Okay, so I feel some peace about uh, my hives, which is a good place to be on a Friday, going into a, a bit of a day or two off. We're going off to uh, out of town to the wedding of a former employee. Uh, she extracted honey for me for quite a few years, and now sometime later, uh, we get a wedding invite. So, I can't have been too bad a boss, I'm thinking. Um, anyway, we, uh, we're looking forward to seeing her getting the rest of her life organized. So, thanks everyone for watching. I will sample... Uh, the 4x4 trial one more time. Well, that's not going to be... It's... Well, we'll... I'm going to try. The weather in October in Manitoba can be beautiful. And it can be horrible. And you never know on a day-by-day -day basis what you're going to get. And it almost always works out that the nicest days I'm doing my day job at the university... So, um, you know, the sun will be shining and I'll say, oh, I got to go sample those highs and tomorrow will be the day and then it'll snow. So that's, uh, I'm going to do my best. We will follow those highs right through to next spring. And that's when you really see the benefits of an effective maintenance treatment is that long after you've done your treatment, you still have low enough levels that you can use a different, kinder, gentler methodology again and just kind of be constantly tamping those mites down rather than letting them build up and then pounding them with uh, some aggressive chemical and then and it's taking kind of a hands-off approach until the next time they're out of control again because you're really counting in that strategy on being able to pound the mites when you need to, and you can't. Winter, we can't get in the hives. Summer, there's supers on the hive. So we really have these very narrow windows. My advice would be never, ever miss a treatment window. If your mites are low, use something that uh, isn't particularly aggressive or dangerous. And if your mites are high, then you got to just throw the, go nuclear as, as quick as you can. All right, folks. Have a great day.